So let's get started with spondylolisthesis. So I want to just go over the different spondies first because there's a bunch of spondies. So, you know, like the spine spondy. Um, with spondylolisthesis, this is a slippage of the vertebrae. So see how here we got the um, L5 vertebrae slipping forward over the S1. So it's just sliding forward. That is essentially what the spondylolisthesis is. Now, on the other hand, spondylosis is where there's starting to be like a narrowing in the just general degeneration of it. So um, pretty much like the normal wear and tear of age, kind of spondylosis kind of goes along with like uh, spinal stenosis. So they're all kind of in the same family, that narrowing and that degeneration of the disc itself. So see how this disc is super thin here. This is quote unquote a normal one up here. And obviously it's compressing the nerve roots. So uh, there's a lot of different differential diagnoses going on with these. So just making sure you're aware. And then I forgot to put one on here, uh, spondylitis. That is inflammation of the spine, the bones of the spine. So that's a, a vertebrae disease. And then we have um, spondylolysis. So spondylolysis, that is where there's a fracture. So actually this person has spondylolysthesis over here with the slippage and they got spondylolysis over here with the vertebrae being damaged. So if the vertebrae is uh, broken, that is spondylolysis. Um, and that is usually caused by a compression fracture or any sort of stress fracture in the vertebrae itself. So kind of just going over the different ones. A lot of these might present similarly with like back pain and then radicular symptoms, but it's kind of just how the cookie crumbles when it comes to um, back problems. So etiology, as I said before, with spondylolisthesis, it is a vertebral slippage. So one of the vertebrae is beginning to anteriorly translate over top of the um, disc, and that is what is causing all those problems because if the disc is out of place, uh, we're gonna have some issues. So there's two different types. There is a trauma type, which is literally you have like you're hit in the back to the point where your um, like vertebrae starts slipping forward. More common with that one will be like a gymnast having trauma or something like that. But what we're going to see more likely in the clinic and then also on the boards is degenerative spondylolisthesis. And that's more common in people over 50 years old, women more than men, and African-Americans are more likely to develop spondylolisthesis than their Caucasian counterparts. So as I said before, it's degenerative, usually due to arthritis is the main cause because, you know, arthritis causes all, every single problem when it comes to bones. And so as you get older, it's causing just more osteophyte formation, and then that's just causing issues. And then that's also why it starts to slide forward. Again, the boards like to di differentiate when it's something that happens more in women than men. And then also if it's notably in one population over another. So African-Americans are more common to get this than Caucasians. And then, as I said before, with younger populations, for some reason, then, um, the boards like to point out gymnasts because I think they're the most common to get an injury such as this due to like bending over backwards, constantly repetitive trauma, or even what, like, I think I, um, I think there was something where a gymnast developed it because they landed on the parallel bars and whatnot, or the uneven bars, sorry. Uh, I'm not caught up to date with my uh, gymnastics lingo, but yeah, just like that trauma injury. So this is the etiology. So what is it looking like? So I have some of the pictures down here of what the grades look like. So you'll have a, uh, down here at the bottom of this picture here, you'll have a healthy spine. So there's no slippage at all. Everything's fine. Everything's good. A grade one slippage would be up to 25% of the vertebrae is slipping over top of the other one. So 25% of trans of the vertebrae slipping and anteriorly translating over the other one would be considered a grade one. A grade two would be anywhere between 25 to 50% of the um, vertebrae slipping over top of the other one. And then grade three would be 50 to 75% of the vertebrae slipping over. And then grade four would be 75% or more. And usually by the time they get to grade, grade two, they've caught it and they're doing some surgery on it because it's just going to get worse. But who knows? Something like that might uh, show up on the boards. 
Now for a patient that you might see in, a, in the clinic, they're gonna have a flexion-based bias. So if we wanna talk about those McKenzie diagnoses, how um, a patient would either prefer a flexion or extension-based kind of thing, with this patient, they are 100% flexion. Like some patients like, oh, they like a little bit of extension, a little bit of flexion, or most of the time they like flexion. Sometimes they like extension. No, this is a patient that absolutely hates to be in extension. So spondylolisthesis with extension, nope, not happening. Their pain is going to shoot through the freaking roof. If you put them in extension, they're going to have ridiculous symptoms off the wahoo. It's bad. Um, they're also going to have difficulty lifting because obviously their spine is slipping and it's not stable. So having that stability to lift an object is going to be causing a lot more pain for this person getting out of the car. So like that bending that, like getting out of that low spot, standing up kind of that, that motion, not working for them. And then they're also going to have difficulty with like steps and inclines just due to the nature of their spine and their positioning. So they're not going to like that, even though like steps and inclines are technically a flexed over position, this patient does not like this at all. So no extension. Now, how are we treating this patient? As I said before, and I'm gonna harp on this again, flexion bias exercises, no extension. Supine exercises, no prone. I'm gonna give you guys an example of my patient today. I had him standing up. He was doing fine with all of his exercises, had him laying on his back. He was fine with that. I was doing traction on him and everything with his neck and stuff. He was fine because I was treating him for his neck. I have him do YTs and I's and prone. This he was able to do them, but then he's like, I, he started doing the whys and he's like, I'm having a lot more pain. I'm like, okay, well, let's like get off your stomach and see what's happening. The man stood up, the man almost fell over. This is the closest I've come to catching a patient in the cl clinic. Like he was like stumbling over, like rolled all the way. Like he was walking and he just like fell onto the low mat table. Like it was bad um, because he couldn't feel his legs because we now have realized that he probably also had spondylolisthesis in his lumbar spine because he already had it in his cervical spine. That's why he was having the ridiculous symptoms. But now we're realizing he has it in his lumbar probably too, because he was fine until he laid in prone. So this is me saying no prone exercises for your spondylolisthesis patients. They do not like it at all and they won't tolerate it. And you'll be catching your patient falling over in the clinic who earlier was completely fine. So what are we doing? Supine exercises, lots of flexion. We love flexion for these patients, like ball rollouts. we got supine marches, straight leg raises and flexion. They love it. Like anything like that's flexion based, double knee to chest, single knee to chest, these patients tolerate it really well and they definitely prefer it. So core stabilization as well. So like lots of abdominal bracing, trying to work on like that TA activation, working on just like general core strengthening, even some like balance and stability exercises to work on our core. We want to do that strengthening exercises to again, strengthen all the muscles around the core to make sure that we're building strong legs to support our upper body and everything like that. So the usual kind of back things we would do with the patient strengthening wise and the usual back things core stabilization wise. But when it comes to like positioning flexion, flexion is the thing, supine is the thing. Um, we want to do a lot of flexibility exercises to correct their lower doses because as they slip forward, they start getting into that lower doses. So let me show you. So see how on this grade four person, they're really, their spine's really curving a lot. And then also here you can see they're curving a lot. So they got that lordosis, so that's that excessive curvature of the spine and uh, in the lumbar spine. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're stretching out their back extensors because their back extensors are getting really tight and then their um, core, their uh, trunk flexors are getting weak and stretched out. And we also want to make sure we're uh, stretching out their hip flexors because remember the hip flexors will pull the, the uh, pelvis anteriorly and make it... Um, because the hip flexors will pull the, anti the pelvis anteriorly into an anterior pelvic tilt because they're really tight just of how the um, pulling on the uh, pelvis tends to turn out. So we might end up with a patient who's had a uh, spinal fusion because they had spondylolisthesis. Now remember if they've had it at one part of their vertebral segment, like my dude earlier who had it in his 
uh, cervical spine, they're more prone to have it in another part. So they might have some spinal fusion to help pull the pressure off the nerves, you know, to, or fix the slippage. I know my mom's friend, she had spondylolisthesis at grade two. She had spinal surgery, helped pull everything back into place, and she no longer had those ridiculous symptoms. So usually they'll get to a point where the patient is like unable to walk or unable to do things because of all the pain and um, ridiculous symptoms. And that is when they end up getting surgery. So surgery is more of a last stitch effort. So keywords I want us to think about when it comes to spondylolisthesis, slippage. So any sort of slippage of the vertebrae, the vertebrae is slipping forward. That can also be anterior translation of the vertebrae. We're thinking spondylolisthesis if it's a, a differential diagnosis. Um, an African-American female, just because that's more the most uh, common type of uh, everything combined. So it's more common to women, more common African-Americans, kind of how I was talking about um, with uh, like adhesive capsulitis is more common in white women or no, just women in general, sorry. Um, and so we would see that and then pain will increase. This is the biggest one. Pain increases with prone positioning slash extension positioning. So we don't, again, my dude the, earlier, I feel bad for him. I literally feel so bad. Um, not tolerating extension at all. The patient will prefer supine or flexion positionings for any of their exercises. So that's also a kind of thing that they're saying, like a patient presents to the clinic with um, like prefers flexion and blah, blah, blah. This is one of the things that will prefer flexion that and like spinal stenosis, any of the like spondies and stuff, they like the flexion based stuff. Um, ridiculous symptoms for nerve root. And they'll pair this with the, they have more radicular symptoms and prone. So that would be more, we're thinking spondylolisthesis or one of the spondies. But if they have relief and prone, we're thinking just a regular old disc herniation. So kind of thinking what's what. And then for some reason, when it comes to the trauma-based one, they like to use like a 14-year-old female gymnast as the example. Um, I don't know why all the textbooks were talking about it too. So I guess if it's talking about a 14 year old gymnast who's had like back pain and prefers flexion, it's probably spondylolisthesis or something like that. Um, just one of those random things that I notice with the boards that sometimes they're like, I want to throw this thing in because we'd like to talk about it. So, oh, well. Okay, guys, sample question. I hope all of you guys get this one right. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient in an outpatient facility diagnosed with grade two spondylolisthesis, which intervention would not be appropriate for this patient? One, posterior pelvic tilts. Two, ball rollout. Three, prone press up. Or four, standing marches. So I'll give you guys like 15 seconds to think about it because I, uh, I went to town on what the answer is, so. All right, guys, so the answer is prone press up. As I said before, do not put a spondylolisthesis patient in prone and then pressing up is just, whoo, they were already through the roof laying flat. If you press them up, wow, they're gonna hate you because remember, as you extend more, you're just making that slippage go further and further. So we don't wanna be doing that. Posterior pelvic tilt. So posterior pelvic tilt is gonna tilt the spine um, into more of a flexion. So it's gonna decrease that lordosis. So anything where we're decreasing the lordosis in the lumbar spine, the patient's gonna like that. That's gonna help them get to where they need to go. Um, ball rollout. So um, I the boards would probably phrase this more of like a seated forward ball rollout just to make sure that there's no like, what is a ball rollout kind of thing. But since I kind of already mentioned it, I, I hope you guys were familiar with what I meant by that. So sitting down a chair, rolling the big old physio ball out to kind of go into flexion. They love it. It's flexion. It's great. Again, I said prone press ups, absolutely no go. If you have a spondylolisthesis patient and you're picking prone press ups as an appropriate intervention, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Just like how if you don't take the break when you take the boards, I'm coming for you as well. Take it. But, um, and then standing marches, again, that is bringing the spine more into a flexion-based activity and it would be good for strengthening. So it's a double whammy. We like that. We love it. So I hope that this helped answer any questions you might have about spondylolisthesis. I hope you get uh, more familiar with how to say the word because it's long. Um, and uh, bonus points again, if you can spell it right on the first time. So Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you in the next one. Take care.